that is a black widow spider in my hand. In North America, the most venomous spiders hands down are the widow spiders. And there's not just one, but three different colors to look out for. Please don't bite me. Spiders are among the most misunderstood and feared creatures on the planet. Whether it's their appearance or venomous bites, it's no secret that people are usually quick to flee in the opposite direction or kill these animals on sight when encountered in the wild. But all around us, there's a secret world that runs parallel to ours. Tiny creatures bustling about, living out their complex lives largely unseen by human eyes. And even the most venomous of spiders have a role to play in this world, which is why it's my mission to uncover their mysterious secrets. I'm Spencer Hoffman, and for years I've been fascinated by the deadliest spiders in the world. And we've got some pretty gnarly ones here in North America, the widow spiders, most famous of which is the notorious Black Widow. And in the forests of northern Texas lurks an absolutely mammoth population of these toxic spiders. There are three species of black widow in the US, the northern, the southern, and the western black widows, all of which spread evenly enough across the country that odds are if you live in the continental US, there might be a widow spider near you right now. These spiders are extremely reclusive and normally stick to dark, dry places where they can spin their web. My friend Jack and I are checking under logs and inside hollow trees for their characteristic webs, thick, tangly, and ridiculously strong Lactrodectus webs in hopes of seeing giant northern black widows. Got a widow on the crawl. This is, uh, I can't see the hourglass. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, you're quick. Okay. There you go. Oh, it's a southern. That is a southern black widow. One of the other species we can get out here. Oh, this would be a juvenile. The reason I can tell is because there's still that red striping on the back. Uh, southern black widows are gonna be totally black on their back, but I can tell it's southern because of that solid hourglass on her belly there. Now, southern black widows, one of the smaller of the widow spiders we have here in North America. They are a lot more active when it is dark. We might be out in habitat searching for these creatures, but be warned, they have a tendency to show up in residential areas. This is where most accidental bites occur. You're reaching under something in a cabinet or a shed, or even inside containers for animal feed that are kept outside, and you get tagged on the finger. The black widows just want someplace dry and out of the way where they can hide until nightfall. So if you live in venom country, be looking out for these spiders. Jack and I are actively hoping to come across cross one, but that might not be the case for you. Watch where you stick your fingers. Good thing I was being careful too, because it wasn't long before we found a proper northern widow. Yo! Yeah! Widow, big one, I got him. Really? Yep, uh, I think it's a northern, yep, yep, there's a, sorry, a mosquito buzzing in my face. Uh, that's, let's see, looks like a northern. Oh, sorry. That, uh, broken oh, yeah, hourglass, yeah. yep. 100%. She's big. Oh, look at that patterning there. A widow this big with that red striped on the back is bound to be a northern. And just like the Australian redbacks, these guys are super, super venomous. I'd be saying, Spencer, that's crazy. Why would you take us why would you take a venomous spider out and hold it on your hand? And the reason being, wow, she's actually kind of coiled up. Sometimes widows will actually do this. When they've been disturbed, they'll cook into a ball and drop and hope they leave them alone. And that patterning, that red on black, is really, really striking. And unlike the rhyme for the snakes, this spider absolutely has venom and it is a potent potent neurotoxin that will absolutely mess you up a bite from this spider will give you a very very serious reaction and a very very rough few days one thing a lot of people think they know about widows is that that hourglass on the bottom means that if you're bitten by the spider you only have an hour to live but that is not at all true there are very few recorded deaths from a black widow spider and those would be very serious reactions on somebody who has a very weaken immune system. What the spider bite will actually do is put you in a lot of pain that no over-the-counter medication can really touch. It is a severe nerve pain. Now it's unlikely, I'm not putting any excess stress on the animal, it's unlikely that you will bite out of spite. They're not mean animals. They can be quick to defend themselves if they feel sufficiently threatened. A bite from the spider will happen generally in little crevices where they like to hide. So they might be hiding like underneath your sink or something. So you go to get like a cleaner or something from underneath there and they're hiding behind it and your fingers actually wrap around and actually squish her. She'll bite you as a quick defense. You'll feel a pinch, but then very quickly that pain of the toxin will start to set in and uh, you'll be in for a world of hurt. They don't seek out humans. They're not looking to pick fights because 
you know, I mean, look at how fat that abdomen is. If I wanted to, I could pop her like a grape, but that's not something I want to do because these are incredible, amazing arachnids and very, very misunderstood. Widow venom is neurotoxic. You may or may not feel the initial bite, but the symptoms will worsen as the bite progresses. The venom attacks your nerves, overwhelming them and sending you into a world of pain. Headaches, muscle cramps, and nausea result. And while death is extremely rare, you may find yourself wishing for it if you get a large dose from a fairly toxic widow. The black widows here range in toxicity, but can be upwards of four to five times more toxic than a rattlesnake, drop for drop. Neurotoxins are no joke, but the dosage makes the poison. If you take nothing else from this video, remember this. You are very unlikely to receive a lethal dose of venom from any of the widow species in North America. So while seeking medical help if bitten is advisable, these aren't deadly monsters we should be seeking out and destroying. And the low amount of venom is a good thing, because the next widow we're after is even more toxic than the black widow, even though it's never killed a human. Well, this is some peculiar habitat we're in today. Uh, peculiar meaning it really isn't habitat at all. But um, if, uh, if Mikey here is correct, there should be some really cool spiders hanging out somewhere around here. Florida is rampant with invasive species, reptiles, amphibians, and yes, widow spiders from more tropical parts of the world find their way here and make themselves comfortable. While I was on production in South Florida, my good friend Mikey put me onto a lead that some of the most toxic widow spiders in the world were lurking on his college campus. These brown widows may look like ordinary house spiders, but they pack one of the lowest lethal doses of any spider venom in the US. And the dead giveaway that they're around are the spiky egg sacs. And trust me, these guys reproduce fast. In many urban environments across the world, they're out competing and even wiping out the native widow species. And we aren't even sure what sort of environmental impact they're having yet. But sure enough, Mikey's lead didn't disappoint. After a rather unusual hike through very disturbed college campus habitat, we stumbled onto our brown widow on one of the science buildings. Got her. Perfect. Now what I've got right here is a brown widow spider. <laughs> literally in the least natural area you could possibly imagine awesome little spiders are actually living i'm gonna do i'll take her out real quick and see so we can get a better look at her look at that these are amazing incredible spiders look at the patterning on this thing those weird geometric patterns on the back of the abdomen or it gets its scientific name, Latrodectus geometricus. And if you got a hint from that name there, it's named the brown widow. Is not a joke. These are actually a widow spider, just like the black widow spider. And what's crazy is here in these urban environments, they actually outcompete native widow species. We're not sure 100% why, because you only find them in these developed areas, out in the wilderness, you can find black widows under logs, inside hollow trees, but brown widows in their non-native range are actually really hard to get outside of much more developed areas. Let's see if she'll cooperate on my hands. Let's see here. Look at that. She is very skittish, and most widow spiders are incredibly skittish. People think of them, oh, they're dangerously venomous, right? But they're actually not that mean, as you can see right here. She's chilling out. It's a shaded area. They don't like the light one bit because they are fairly nocturnal and their eyes are really meant more for just distinguishing light and dark to uh, detect threats. They're not very keen on their vision. You can see she's probing her front legs all around me. That's how she understands her world. They're very tactile animals and in their web, they'll use that tactile ability to help them hunt. You can see she's webbing me up here. Now, Latrodectus web is actually one of the coolest things about these spiders. You know, we, we normally think about their venom and how toxic these animals are, but their web is actually really ridiculously strong. Um, pound for pound, it's many times stronger than steel. And as a result, we uh, are studying it in the lab because we wanna learn more about its chemical properties because it could be used in a lot of different material sciences in the real world and would help us advance our technology. So just, I mean, just imagine that right there, a spider, a venomous spider most people are afraid of that can surround us all the time, 
has that weird chemical secret inside its web that we're using to advance our technology. How incredible is that? Widow spiders are one of my favorite groups of spiders because they just hide so much potential. They're such small little creatures that they pack a toxic power, a chemical potency that they've evolved over millions of years that they've used to subdue their prey, but it actually has that really incredible effect on would-be predators as well. Really remarkable feat of evolution right there and an absolutely insane animal to find in the wild, native or not. Thing is, black widows and brown widows can be found pretty much all over. South Florida is a bit of a hike for me coming from Central North Carolina, so these guys aren't really what I'd call the draw. There is another widow spider here in the US, one that is profoundly rare, so much so that very little is actually known about its biology. If you've been a viewer of the channel for a long time, you'll know that I rank this creature as a truly legendary find, the Red Widow. Found only in remote habitats deep within Florida's palmetto scrubs, this is not a spider that you're going to see in your house. But if you do venture out into the palmettos, be warned. These guys are seriously venomous, and they advertise it. I've tracked these spiders down in the past, but I've always wanted to showcase them in a video like this one, having all three color morphs of widow spiders in North America archived in one video for you to see. Our first attempt to find these widows ended in disaster, and I found out firsthand the toxic power of these spiders. With only a short pinch in the knuckle, I had muscle aches for hours afterwards. It wasn't agonizing, and three months after the bite, I haven't experienced any further symptoms, but there are horror stories from this spider. A high yield and venomation could leave you with permanent side effects, so this is not an arachnid to trifle with. After my bite symptoms subsided, we gave it one more crack in the same location, and this time, I used a much longer stick. Look at that. That is a red widow. And this is probably the rarest of the widow spiders here in North America. Most people haven't even heard of them. They only live in really, really distinct pockets of Florida wilderness. Now, it's pretty warm out here, and this is a heated up spider. One of those things I say, don't ever try handling these spiders at home. This is a bite you do not want to take. Look at that gorgeous coloration. This is definitely a spider that I would say is absolutely beautiful. Jumping spiders are cute, but the Red Widow, that is just gorgeous. These guys, not a whole lot is known about them. There actually aren't any bites in the medical record because pretty much the only people who've been bitten by the spider have been researchers who are testing the bite. And probably less than 50 people have been bitten by this spider. You have to go way out of your way to find them. You know, we are miles from anything deep in habitat. And this is the only one we found. They're uh, not easy to find, but this is the second locality that I've been able to see these spiders at. And it's really good to see that there's different spots where these creatures are holding on. Now the venom of the spider is interesting. It's not as toxic as the black widow. It's actually pretty much on par with the Western diamondback rattlesnake. But of course, the bite from the spider is not gonna kill you because as we know, when it comes to venomous bites, the dosage makes the poison. The amount of venom you receive is gonna matter a lot more than the toxicity of that venom. This spider right here probably wouldn't even put you in the hospital, but if you're bitten by a widow spider, you wanna make sure you're uh, keeping a very close eye on your symptoms. Now that coloration may be pretty, but that's her advertising that, hey, I am dangerously venomous, and most widow spiders are, and they usually have a way of advertising it. Normally, with black widows and brown widows, it's that red hourglass. But look at the backside of this one. There's not much of an hourglass there. It's the rest of her body that tells you, hey, don't mess with me. We call that aposomatic coloration. You see it with wasps, you see it with a lot of venomous snakes. And as a result, you get different things that'll even mimic them. So I've heard some comments of people saying, oh, I found a red widow in my house. More than likely, it was a red house spider or some kind of other spider in the same family as the red widow that has that red coloration. I guarantee you, if you're seeing something that looks like this in your house, it is not a red widow. These are very specific, very specific animals that only hang out in palmettos, in deep scrub habitat just like this. You are not gonna be encountering this on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's why it's something that we shouldn't be fearing, just something that we need to absolutely sit here and respect as a true force of nature and something that we hope to see for years to come. Absolutely beautiful spider and probably my favorite of all of the venomous spiders in North America.
The widow spiders may be the most toxic that North America has to offer, but this is by no means the most dangerous group of spiders in the world. As we release this red widow back into the wild, my sights are now set on South America, where I'll join some familiar faces back in the field in search of one of the most toxic animals on the planet, the Brazilian wandering spiders, as well as many other outlandish monstrosities from the secret world all around us. All of these creatures may seem frightening, but it's important to remember, just like us, they all have roles to play and are nothing but simple creatures trying to make their way in the universe. As long as we respect them, they will respect us, and we can safely discover their amazing secrets together. If you want to delve deeper in some of the strange gems hiding in North American wilderness, check out this video right here, where I track down the smallest rattlesnakes in the world. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.